Good morning, Julia. Um, and um, before we start, I'm with you. Uh, on my comp, I didn't do Greek either, so I'm going to call it Omicron. And if yeah. it's not right, you'll it's, have to forgive me. It just reminds me of my first tutorial at Oxford. I was asked a question in Latin by my philosophy tutor. I went, <laughs> mate, I didn't go to that kind of school. Sorry. But there we are. Yeah. So let's go with Omicron. Um, OK. Um, but I mean, first of all, let's talk about the government's reaction to the sure. new variant in the first place, um, because um, we've got Joe Biden in America saying there's no reason to panic. We've got the World Health Organization saying similar. We've got uh, Angeli Kurtzi, uh, the chair of the uh, the South African uh, uh, Medical Association, who discovered this new variant. We spoke to her on the show yesterday saying, look, you know, the cases we've seen so far, there's no reason to believe it's not covered by the vaccines. The, 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 the pharmaceutical companies and many very, very senior experts in that field say there's no reason to think that it'll be it'll escape the vaccines. Um, and it looks like it does actually cause um, less severe disease, very mild symptoms in those who've caught it so far. So um, should we be bringing in any measures at all right now, in your view? Well, I think you're absolutely right in, in what you set out there, that I, I don't think people should panic at all. I think... Uh, as I've said before on this program many times, and I know you you have as well, COVID is going to be with us forever. We're going to have variants forever. Uh, and I think what you need government to do is react in a very calm, um, responsible way. I think what the government's done is said that it doesn't uh, know all the facts yet, which is absolutely correct. Um, and it's doing one or two things as a precaution. So, you know, the, the issue about the face coverings in shops uh, I, I've never had a, a massive fight about face coverings. The, the regulations are time limited, but they do expire on the 20th of December, uh, which I think is welcome. Uh, I'm actually more focused and more worried about the change to the self-isolation rules on contact with someone with the Omicron variant. I'm not sure how that's going to work. And I'm a bit worried it's going to take us back to the pandemic days. And that change isn't time limited. It actually runs all the way to the end of March, which I am concerned about. So that's I'm going to be asking some questions about that in the House of Commons today. But no, I think people can have confidence that the vaccines work. We've lis I've listened to the scientists. They've said that there may, may be some reduction in how effective they are, but they're still likely to be very effective against serious disease and hospitalisation and death, which is what's important. They might be a bit less effective against transmission but we'll have more evidence on that in a few weeks so that the key message i think is and I, I think it should be a voluntary decision but my advice for adults would be go and get vaccinated if you've had your first two doses get your booster shot as i did last week that's how we protect people and how we enable people to live their lives as they would wish um you said you've not really had an, an issue with masks and that it will expire on the 20th of december i'm i've been told by um, you know, various people on and off air that look, this is look, this is a, a a measure just in case. You know, better safe than sorry. We don't know all all the details about this variant. We should probably act as if it might be more of a concern rather than less, and then be you know shutting the door uh, after the, the 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 horse has bolted. But um, the the thing about this is, can you imagine a scenario on the twentieth of December when um, when the, the 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 government says, okay, we're no longer going to have the mask mandate, and that and that being acceptable to not just the opposition, but the media, which has turned into the opposition now, and insisting and clamouring for masks to continue uh, during the Christmas period and for forevermore. Once brought back in, I mean, they were brought in as a temporary measure summer 2020. How's that working out? Yeah, well, look, there's a couple of things. First of all, I think we did the right thing last year uh, when we uh, remove legal restrictions uh, and said that we would give advice to people yeah. and let people make sensible decisions. I supported that at the time. You'll remember that many people um, said that was going to be a disaster and were quite hysterical about it and said it was going to be, you know, we were going to see everything running out of control. That isn't what happened. Um, vaccines work. The science is very clear. Uh, and in fact, over the last few weeks, we've seen the number of people uh, in hospital because of COVID actually falling. Yeah. Um, the number of deaths falling because the booster program is actually working very effectively. So, um, you know, it's disappointing that we've gone back to mandating things. But as I said, they're time limited. You raise a very good point, though, about um, Christmas, because the House of Commons rises for the Christmas recess on the 17th of December. And I was pressing ministers yesterday that if they want to extend any of these measures or worse, if they decide they want to strengthen any of them, I think it would be unacceptable for ministers to do that by decree uh, i think they should make sure that parliament either carries on sitting all the way up until christmas or brings the house back so that we can whatever measures they put 
They can be properly debated. We can well, test the evidence. I mean, you, you say and that, but they're not properly them. debated because we've never been presented with the evidence for any of these measures. There, there is such scant evidence. I mean, we, we've had, uh, you know, a, a opposition MPs and uh, saying things like 53 percent uh, more protection uh, from, from masks. I mean, this is a like totally and utterly debunked study in Bangladesh. Which, I mean, absolutely absurd study that, that just I mean, they think it may have actually affect made a difference that was so, you know, statistically insignificant that that it's it's again not worth the paper it's printed on we are, we we never have proper debates in parliament anymore because they they're never debating the actual facts it's just what people feel and this should be based on the science what is the evidence for any measure that's being brought in that it will make any difference and the evidence that the the costs of it do not outweigh the benefits but we never hear that from the government Juliet, well, we certainly don't hear it from the uh, Labour opposition. You're absolutely right. They don't do their job to scrutinise the government. Even if they agree with the government, it's still their job to ask the difficult questions. So actually, you'll know that one of the things my group of Conservative yeah. MPs has been trying to do is exactly that, is to challenge ministers to provide evidence, to ask the difficult questions that, frankly, somebody needs to ask. Uh, and I think we've done that job very well. Yeah. Not everyone will agree with us, but I think that whether you agree with us or not, you, you do have to agree that debating things properly yeah. and insisting that there's evidence and balance, and you look at both oh. sides of the argument, I take my hat off. I take my hat off to your group. I think you've done a magnificent job on, no on that front. And no one else is doing it. Let, let's talk more about the self isolation rules you mentioned earlier, because a lot of people are sort of very sort of casual about these these changes to the travel rules. Um, we're going to talk about a bit a bit later with, with a travel expert. There's this sort of well, I wasn't planning to go to Botswana for Christmas anyway. What difference does it make? Close the borders. It's not an issue. But more PCR tests. Actually, this has a huge impact on international travel generally doesn't it especially the pcr test that needs to be done with you know with zero day zero one or two before, after you come back from your from your trip whether it's business family or, or a holiday um, but having to wait until you get a negative test before you can go out that's actually going to put the kibosh on an awful lot of people's plans y yes it is and i i think what's really important and the health secretary said this yesterday he said if when we've looked at the evidence from this Omicron variant, uh, it's not more dangerous than Delta, then the rules will be removed um, straight away. And I think that should apply to the travel rules as well. Ministers have been very clear. I listened to the Transport Secretary. He said the travel rules aren't going to stop anything happening. They may just slow it down. Mm -hmm. So I think introducing them while we learn more about the variant may be acceptable. But, but certainly when that evidence is clear and scientists have had a chance to look at how effective our vaccines are uh, or whether we need to develop some new ones, I don't think they should stay any longer. And you're quite right. They will have an impact. They will cause people to cancel. They'll cause businesses to run into difficulty. And that also is the impact on the whole tone yep. of the debate. Why I try and do it in a calm, reasonable way, because otherwise you have a chilling effect. People end up cancelling things. I've seen some reports this morning that hospitality is starting to see people cancel things just oh. in case. Oh, that absolutely. No, I, I know people, I, I know someone who's just lost thousands of pounds in business it's because because major events are being cancelled and all yeah. the, all the everyone is involved with all of that, the, the performers, the, the, the cab drivers, everything, all losing work. There is a massive knock-on effect of the decisions. I'd love to ask you just about one final thing. It's just emerged on, on sure. social media. Um, that um, these masks, the masks being compulsory for shops and for public transport, we were told on Saturday. Sunday night, it was sneaked out that they were uh, in the schools in communal areas as well. That's been brought in uh, either yesterday or in lots of schools mm. today. Um, and yet, of course, you know, I was I was with the Prime Minister and half the Cabinet yesterday, major lunch in I Westminster. Saw, no one no one wearing any masks. I know I'm not saying anyone should wear any masks. And I'm not saying anyone was breaking the rules. They weren't. But but to say that my child needs to wear a mask having already had COVID twice in a communal hall, a communal corridor in a school but but 500 people, many of whom, frankly, were quite elderly, can all be in a room, not a single mask, and it's not required. Um, and also the new mask rules have extraordinarily an exemption for party buses. If you're on the bus travelling home from work, you have to wear a mask. If it's a party bus where people are dancing and drinking, you don't have to wear a mask. I mean, they're just making this stuff up as they go along, aren't they? Well, look, I do, I do think... Um, the, the issue, I mean, I've looked at the, the rules. I do think the issues are uh, not clear. The evidence is very unclear on masks, as I said. I, I, I don't think we do a lot of economic damage, which is why I'm not going to get into a massive argument about them. But equally, I don't think they make a huge difference. I mean, my own view is 
the government's advice on wearing them in crowded indoor spaces. I wear them in a crowded indoor space. I don't when it isn't crowded. So the House of Commons, for example, it's PMQs and it's rammed. I'll wear a mask. If there's hardly anyone in there, which sadly is often the case, then I won't. So I judge it based on the okay. circumstance, All which right. is what I think most people do. Mark Harper, Chairman of the COVID Recovery Group, Conservative MPs, thank you very much indeed. 818 is the time.